Good afternoon, I'm Dave Baker, and we are very happy to welcome to our program for the very first time, and hopefully, if all goes well, not the last time. Good afternoon, Stephanie Beaumont. How are you? Dave Baker, I'm great and very happy to be on the program with you. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, we're kind of doing this kind of uh, kind of a last minute, spur of the moment type thing, but what I wanted to kind of do with you... That's uh, the best way to do things, Dave. I want to get your... Carpe diem, Dave. Carpe diem. Okay, can we go with that for the title of this uh, little segment? Would that work? Sure, why okay, not? Okay, okay. Well, you're based out on the East Coast now, Stephanie. That's kind of basically your home territory, too. You are from uh, Nova Scotia, correct? Yeah, you know, yep. I was born in Halifax and then sort of traveled all over Canada. I was a banker brat. I guess my dad had worked with the Bank of Nova Scotia, so we got transferred, you know, to the Caribbean and then back to Ontario where I spent most of my, you know, sort of formative years, if you will, and went to university there and, and uh, worked with producers and launched my musical career in Ontario and then traveled across Canada and, you know, after a couple of TV contracts, decided to relocate and... Uh, uh, here I am, back now, at home. Now, those TV contracts specifically kind of, I guess, got you a little bit away from the music and kind of more into the media aspect of it, right? Well, you know what? I was sort of between my first and second album, and truth be told, I was headed to the CCMAs with nothing to do. And as an artist and an A-type personality like me, I was like, I don't want to be there and have you nothing, know, nothing to do. going on. Yeah. And my album was dropping the Tuesday after the, the CCMAs. So I pitched an idea for a backstage special to CMT, and I said... I just want to do kind of a Dave Letterman meets Dick Clark kind of show. So they gave me a kamikaze crew, and we just went in there. And it was the year that the Wilkinsons broke with 26 Cents. I just remember it specifically because they were so little. <laughs> That's one of the things I remember the most. And, and, I mean, everybody was so great. And Shania was like this porcelain thing. And it was just like a really wonderful year to be doing this special. There was so much to talk about. And um, it was just a great time. So, nonetheless, uh, CMT um, – offered me a job and I said well I'm just about to you know launch album number two and so I did some reporting for them like at festivals and stuff that I was performing at and kind of caught the bug because between the first and second albums I did 14 music videos Dave and really got sort of hooked on the production side of it so for me it was a great opportunity to do TV and then I got an opportunity to work on uh, radio in Edmonton uh, um, Kissin in Edmonton and then went to TV and did my own entertainment show on a channel in Edmonton, and then to Ottawa, and then to Victoria, and then back to Ottawa. So yeah, I've kind of been all over. I always yeah. say I'm like Hank Snow. Yeah, you, you, you been have everywhere. been everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, does that give you kind of a, a little bit of a different, ad, or I guess, a perspective of how the things really work? Because you've been on both sides of things now, right? <laughs> I have, you know, I mean, it's really, it's an interesting thing as a, um, you know, I, I was a business major too, Dave, so I've got that other side of it too. I don't know if I was ever, you know, I, I uh, art, the artist side, um, I kind of looked at that differently too, uh, and then, you know, playing the songs and stuff like that. I, You know what it, it comes right down to, Dave? Two things. As far as radio goes, if it's good music, it gets played. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm being serious. And I mean, and the right person and the right song, and sometimes you'll get the most talented talented person, but if they don't have the hit, it's sad, but that's life. And then you think to yourself, well, you know, just wasn't meant to be, and so you move on, and you're supposed to be doing something else. You can rationalize anything like that, Dave. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that, that, that's a great way of looking at it, too. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about what your thoughts are on uh, specifically, considering, like, you know, you, you started out, what would that have been, like... Uh, Mid nineties, maybe uh, oh, gee, early nineties. Thanks, Dave. Thanks um, a lot, Dave. <laughs> For those of you playing the home game, it was a long time ago. Oh. Um, but no, it was probably yeah. I mean, I think my first album was ninety six. It came out in and okay. and certainly, you know, I everything is timing, right? I mean, everything in life is timing. And when it came to when I came out, it. I don't know if the timing couldn't have been better or worse. Um, it just depends on if you're a half full, half empty kind of person. But I look at it as half full. Certainly in terms of the Canadian country music scene, it was the year that Terry Clark broke. It was the year that Shania Twain, um, it, not she turned the corner, so to speak. She she rose the bar and crossed over into, into different formats like nobody else had done. Um, so when you're going up against that as a Canadian artist, uh, even though I was BMG, 
Refugee Music Canada at the time, I was still regarded as independent. So it was interesting, and that's a whole other ball of wax. But nonetheless, there was an energy and an enthusiasm in Canadian country music that I'm not, I won't say has waned, but I'd say it's plateaued. Okay, so you, so that so I was just going to ask you, what are your thoughts on today's crop of country music stars coming from this can uh, from from this country? Well, I I like it. I like it a lot, and I think it's there. You know, there was kind of a, a valley, perhaps, and I won't identify the years or the artists, but I think things are definitely on the incline, and I think that. And I don't want to, you know, sort of, I'll sort of segue into my world, but there's something that happens on the East Coast. Regardless of genres, artists work together. Artists really support one another. They songwrite together. They tour together and, and perform together. And there isn't this kind of, which, are you country? Are you rap? Are you, you know, I mean, people are just... They love music. They love good music down here. I mean, if anybody is coming out here, please go see live music. You can find it anywhere. Um, but I think what's happening in the in the Canadian country music scene especially, and there was always a certain element of it, but certainly now more than ever, you're seeing artists work together more than they have before, and camps really sort of expand. When I was... Um, performing there were kind of these little pockets and certainly nashville has been i don't know if there was an explosion of people that went to nashville at the time um but that population and the people that i knew that were totally canadian are living in nashville and doing very well right now be it from a production side or a songwriting side i mean i think there's really been a a, a door opening that hasn't closed but certainly an expansion that's got everybody feeling an energy again that may have waned a little bit there for a while. Do you think because there are so many independent acts right now and based on that fact that they kind of almost have to band together just to survive? You know, maybe. And again, this is something that the, the recording industry itself, I mean, everybody's sort of finding their way, right? Back in the day, you and I would go out and buy a single when it came out. Now, you know, if and you put an album out. I can't count how many artists I've spoken to just for my website alone that aren't planning on putting an album together proper. They're planning on releasing CDs or singles, if you will, yeah. to the web. I mean, so even from a production standpoint... I I mean, everybody's just got to, you know, they've got to keep their head up and their stick on the ice and sort of figure out as the ground shift where they're going to land. I mean, look at the labels. I mean, I remember when I was um, I was out, there was five major labels in Canada. Yeah. Now is there two days? You would um, know better than I would. Major ones? Yeah, there, there, there is at least a couple, but that, that's about it. You could probably count on, you you know, know. on one hand how many... You know, there are actually out there right now. So yeah. that's a so, big I mean, factor. I think you raise a really good point that, uh, you know, when times are tough, you know, that the tough get going and people band together. And I think that there's a, an appreciation. And I think, you know, um, I, I don't think in in entertainment you can you can sort of look at it as competition. It's kind of like everybody's working towards a common goal, yeah. I think. And yeah. I, know, I know that sounds maybe Pollyanna or crazy to me, but I just think that, you know, if it's good music and you enjoy playing it, then you need to figure out a way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so. you mentioned your website, and I want to talk about that and a couple other things. Have you got time to stick around? Of course. Would you mind if we played something by you, by the way? I will pay you later, Dave. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> don't tell. Don't tell anybody. Uh, okay. Let's break out some memories from Stephanie. This is called "Let's Do Something About It" on our uh, special guest uh, with our special guest Stephanie Beaumont here on Canadian Coast to Coast. Mm-hmm. 